<laughs> what a car! What a wagon! Thank you, Porsche, for building this. Hey, crew. I've got the key to that 23 Porsche Panamera GTS Sport Turismo. We are going to take it for a drive, but first, let's check it out. It looks on the inside and outside. No notable changes for the 23 model year, so that means up front, we're still looking at that classic Porsche crest above some black plastic front ventilation mingling with body color matching. There are LED DRLs and turn signals down low. Above, we find projector LED matrix headlights as an option. This paint job is called chalk. It's a non-metallic, almost putty color that I quite like with the black accents. Like these 21 inch multi-spoke wheels wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, 275 section front and 315 at the rear. Within those wheels are optional carbon ceramic brakes with black painted calipers. There's black gloss for this functional side vent, GTS for the front doors, black plastic for the lower sills, body color for the mirror caps, black gloss for the window trim. Stepping back to look at the profile of this, is it a wagon? Is it a shooting brake? Either way, I like it. So few wagons still exist, and of those, so many have been lifted. It's nice to see a long, low roof line. At the back are LED taillights with this bar that runs across the back with LED turn signals. The roof mounted spoiler is in black gloss the Panamera GTS lettering as well, and the quad exhaust outlets for the GTS are also blacked out. I dig that rear end view. I adore the silhouette. It's not an edgy design, but it's attractive and unique. Here's the question for you. Which is better looking, the Panamera Sport Turismo or the Taycan Cross Turismo? Let me know in the comments and let's check out the interior. Opening up, and looking inside at this black leather interior with two sunroofs and a suede wrapped headliner. As an option, this one has chalk colored seat belts. There are suede seat centers and with the premium package, you get rear seat heating. On the doors, there's leather up top with contrast stitching, chalk interior trim as an option, leather here, suede wrapping for your armrest and leather down the door panel. This one also gets a high-end Bose sound system, one touch up down windows, and aluminum tread plates. Now to get into this seat, there's not really a grab handle to lower yourself easily, so I just use the back of the front seat. And now positioned behind my own seat at six feet tall. I've got good knee room, the seat back's all in leather. There is a map pocket. The foot pockets are on the narrower side, so thigh support is just okay. Headroom is great though. Head easily clears the roof. That gets the thumbs up from me. And in the middle are air vents and a four zone climate control system with the premium package. There are two USB-C ports there. Now this area is pretty pronounced. So no one's gonna really wanna straddle it in the middle seat, despite there being a seat belt. Instead, you'll just pull down the armrest and have two cup holders. Let's check out the front next. Now there's no need to slam these doors closed because with the premium pack, you get the soft close feature, but just for build quality's sake, let's listen in. Oh, that's a good thought. Smart keel sentry is for the rear and front doors. Looking at these front chairs, which also have suede centers. GTS is stitched on the headrest of these seats and there are very wide shoulder supports. You get power adjusting upper and lower bolster supports and front seat heating. Panamera GTS is on this tread plate. There's aluminum accenting for the foot pedals. The front doors look just like the back with the addition of power adjusting and power folding door mirrors plus three position memory for the driver's seat. To release the hatch, hold down that button briefly to reveal just under 19 cubic feet of space behind the second row. If you need more room, you will have to reach in very far to the release levers and the seats fold down 60-40 and it does create a flat floor with 49 cubic feet of space. There's a power close and lock button on the tailgate. And to get into the driver's seat, I'll use the A pillar to lower myself, then soft close the door. 
drivers are treated to a suede wrap steering wheel on the GTS, and I love Porsche wheels. Perfect size, perfect thickness in the hands. Nice aluminum paddles in the back with good travel. Drive mode selection dial is here on the wheel. The tack is right in the center with a chalk background as an option, and there are digital gauges bordering it that are reconfigurable. There's no head-up display, but stitched leather up on the dashboard, more of that shock trim, and a sport chrono lap timer right in the middle. Beneath is a widescreen touchscreen with kind of lackluster graphics, but it is responsive, and it's got wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Beneath the screen is a dial to control the infotainment. You get a volume knob, knurled finishes for your climate inputs, and lots of gloss black here, which will collect dust and smudge, yes, but the worst part is that it's kind of hard to see here, but if you didn't equip a certain option, the icon is still there, it's just grayed out. So you want ventilated seats? Oh yeah, it's a permanent tease. You didn't buy it. Suede wrapping for the console, you get two cup holders. Inside is a little bit of storage with wireless charging pad, USB-C port, and a DC outlet. Visibility is quite good, actually. Now, there is no standard blind spot monitoring. You gotta pay for that, along with rear cross traffic. The interior materials are very nice. The layout is a little conservative, but it's got the sporty touches where it counts for the driver. And speaking of, let's take the Panamera GTS Sport Turismo for a drive. All right, let's fire it up. And before we do, note a couple things about the way this vehicle does start up. For one, Porsche puts the ignition on the left-hand side, not the right. Why? Well, back when there was the Le Mans style start to races, where the race actually began by having drivers run to their vehicles, hop in, start it up, and then go, Porsche wanted to save some time. So typically drivers were turning the vehicle on with the right hand and then going and putting the vehicle into first gear. Porsche thought, well, if they could be using both hands, they could save time. So the left hand turned on the vehicle, the right hand put the vehicle in gear. The second thing to note about this is that on the lesser specs of some Porsche models, you will use the key fob to put it in the ignition and then crank it on. But on these higher specs, it looks like they've glued in the butt end of a key fob into that ignition, but you still have to crank it on. There's no start stop in Porsche vehicles. And with that, let's turn it on. Air vents unfold for us. Twin turbo V8 fires up for us. And the air starts blowing. All right, so our drive mode selected here on the dial will be normal to kick things off. And then to go into reverse, press in and forward. That brings up a medium to medium high resolution camera. We get to bird's eye view off to the right, then a back of view with trajectory lines. You can also have a wider angle shot, which we'll use here. E-brake off. Parking sensors going. And then press in. There's also, you can't really see it, but there's a trigger here that you got to pull when changing gear. We'll kick things off with the turning radius. Wheel fully cranked. And the Panamera pivots around so well with the available and equipped rear axle steering. Turn signal sound. so very modest. It's a gentle indication. I'm going this way. What about the world famous horn test? Ooh, not so gentle. But I like the sound of that horn. Powertrain in the Panamera GTS, whether it's the standard body style or Sport Turismo, both are using a four liter twin turbocharged V8. And that engine is applied to a variety of different Volkswagen Auto Group vehicles. Here, it's making 457 horsepower and 473 pound-feet of torque. That is routed through an eight-speed dual-clutch automatic and sent in the GTS to all four tires. This dual-clutch, what Porsche calls the PDK, or Porsche Double Coupling Transmission, 
is kind of unusual for a dual clutch because typically with these gearboxes, the first couple gear changes coming up to a stoplight or just creeping away from one, there's clunkiness. But this one, you barely feel a rocking in the chassis with the first couple gear changes and then it just gets so smooth from there. The throttle response in normal is linear and easy to modulate. The brake pedal has some sharpness to the bite, but you can feather it out and creep up to a stop. Ride quality in the GTS. This vehicle is lower 10 millimeters compared to the standard Panamera. And it's riding on adaptive dampers with air springs over the majority of things you will encounter on the road. Gutters going up and down driveways, little bumps like we just experienced there. The dampening is excellent and the air suspension is quiet. However, over more egregious imperfections, potholes, or I went over some steel grates for road construction today, the air suspension will crash violently. And that is a rather disruptive character trait to not only the Panamera's air suspension, but pretty much every other performance luxury vehicle that I've driven with a similar three chamber air suspension setup. They all do that. They're all great right up until the moment that they're not. And then they're loud and it just, it rattles you. So that's, that's a peculiarity to air suspension systems. Cabin quietness, apart from the air suspension. is excellent. You hear tire noise more than anything else as the speeds pick up. The wind noise is kept low. The tires just kind of hum away in the background. Not to a degree that would spoil a casual conversation with your passengers. It's just discernible amidst this otherwise well-insulated cabin. And that twin turbo V8, when not prodded, is just rumbling gently in the background. The seat comfort is stellar, ergonomic shape, tons of adjustability, up and down, forward and backward, the bolsters independently adjusting as well. The padding is a little on the thinner side, so I wonder if a ton of hours behind the wheel, you wouldn't have a bit of fatigue. But commuting in the Panamera GTS Sport Turismo, would no doubt be a pleasure, but commuting is not all that there is to this vehicle. We know that it's a Porsche, so we got to see how it does in a performance environment. And let's start the bidding with a real world zero to 60 test. Got the race box set up here, straight piece of road, not a prep surface. Going to put the vehicle into Sport Plus drive mode, which for Porsches is all you need to activate launch control. Foot pinned on the brake, giving it to the throttle, let go of the brule, whoa! And there's 60 in three and a half seconds. That launch was brutal. It startled me genuinely. And three and a half seconds is quicker than Porsche's own estimate of 3.7 seconds. Unbelievable. Thank you, all wheel drive. The straight line feats are amazing, yes. But it isn't until you get the Panamera GTS to a good curvy road that you fully appreciate what you have on your hands. And the first thing that stands out is always the first thing that stands out to me in a Porsche. It's the steering. No one is doing a better electrically assisted power steering rack with more communication, better weight, more fine load built up through the rack in a corner than Porsche. It just talks to you. As does that twin turbo V8 now in Sport Plus. It's a sweet melody, though not as characterful 
as the Cayenne GTS I last drove. Surprising. This car has a couple great options that extract more from the lateral performance, including dynamic chassis control, which is active anti-roll bars to keep the car flat, and the torque vectoring plus system, which swaps out the mechanical limited slip rear differential for an electronic one to shuttle around the power much quicker getting it to the wheel with traction and improving your exiting speeds, which is of high value when you're trying to extract every last morsel of the 473 horsepower that you have on tap. It's a lot of power, but in the context of today's high performance $800,000 vehicles, it's not a mega amount. It comes down to the way this car uses it. and the active anti-roll bars and rear wheel steering system utilize that power so well. It's not just how the power is used, it's how the 4,600 pounds is disguised. I've already forgotten that I'm driving a practical wagon. The Panamera GTS Sport Turismo just behaves like a sports car and you're very thankful for the resistance to heat fade of these optional carbon ceramic brakes and the grip of the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. This car is just so in control of its motions. and that inspires you to push it a little harder to see where the fringes are. Because you expect it to reward you. And indeed it does. Every time. <laughs> what a car! What a wagon! Thank you, Porsche, for building this. Inspire some competition, please. We need more driver's wagons. That's what the enthusiast community needs, really. Some variety from the plague of SUV consumption. Gearbox is also splendid. Holds on to gears in Sport Plus appropriately, not upshifting early. Right there, holding it out to redline, I peeled off early just to see, and it didn't upshift. Go PDK. And if we wish to utilize manual mode, move the selector over to the left and activate splendid feeling aluminum paddles great action Quick shifts. And sensational speed. I'm really only just pining for more theater, more volume from this V8. Because after driving the Cayenne GTS, I know what this engine can sound like. It can snarl, it can bark. It can give you the pops and bangs of Overrun. But I can't seem to elicit those things in 
the Panamera GTS. I want an emotion-filled soundtrack to match the emotion of this drive. Oh, it's so good. And that is going to lead me into my miles per hour word of the day, which for the 23 Panamera GTS Sport Turismo is percipient, meaning having a good understanding of things. And for this word, I'm thinking of the buyer of the Panamera GTS and their discernment in their purchase decision. They've done the research, they've driven what's out there, and they've come away underwhelmed. They wanted something with beveled edges and granular feedback and precise motions. And after driving this car, they found what they were looking for. Now, before we discuss what else is out there, let's go over the fuel economy, top speed, and starting figure. The fuel economy is 15 MPG in the city, 20 on the highway, and 17 combined. The top speed is 182 miles per hour. The starting price is just under $143,000 for the Sport Turismo version, which is six grand more than the non-Sport Turismo version. And this one as tested is 172 grand. And if the idea of a high output wagon gets you all hot and bothered, there are some other alternatives to consider. There's the Audi R6 Avant that starts at about $123,000. It makes 591 horsepower, gets to 60 in 3.5 seconds, has a top speed of 190 miles per hour, fuel economy of 17 combined, and more cargo space than the Panamera Sport Turismo. There's also the Mercedes-AMG E63S wagon. That one starts at $122,000. It makes 603 horsepower, gets to 60 in just 3.1 seconds while having a tying top speed as this car, 180 miles per hour. The fuel economy is 18 combined. And like the R6 Avant, there is greater cargo space in the E63S wagon than the Panamera Sport Turismo. I like all of the vehicles I just mentioned, which makes choosing a winner particularly difficult. Furthermore, each of the vehicles has their own benefit. The R6 Avant is extremely good looking. It's the best looking of the vehicles I mentioned. And the Mercedes-AMG E63S wagon is by far the best sounding with the most chic interior. But the Panamera Sport Turismo, the GTS version, is the most engaging to drive. It gives you the most enjoyment and involvement as the driver. And if that matters to you, if you find yourself to be a percipient buyer, then that might be worth the additional coin that Porsche is charging for this vehicle. But my issue with it is that if you add on any options, the price balloons as we've seen with our tester here. And when you think about the fact that you could get a very well optioned AMG E63S wagon, probably my pick in the segment for the money, for way less than this car, you have to be more than just percipient to choose this vehicle, you have to be very well healed. If you are, you're getting a very clean and upscale cabin, you're getting a unique and special exterior, and you're getting driving dynamics that are just unparalleled in this segment. And you're getting a crashing air suspension, which we just heard right there. I wasn't lying about that. I hope you guys have enjoyed this POV drive review. If you did, please like, comment, and share it. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell to get notified, and I'll see you next time. I'll leave you with some push to pass power.